Welcome back to the channel. If you're a beginner and you're just starting out with 35mm photography, what's your best option in terms of gear? First of all, go check your parents' attic, your grandparents' attic. You're most likely to find out some cameras that still works and uh, it will be zero dollars and it for a better little investment, just a little film. It may be your first step into the world of 35mm photography. If you're not going to find out a 35mm camera and your parents are tick, then you will have a few options. Gone are the days of really, really cheap cameras. Not so. Mostly these days, there are a few cameras that are gotten really, really expensive, mostly because of the fashionable, because there is a lot of people that talk about them, but they're not necessarily the best, not even for a beginner. So you may actually be able to find a really good deal. I'm talking about five bucks. Uh, or even less sometimes for uh, complete the function of 35 mm camera that still works and it's still a perfectly good camera with really sharp lenses just not the ones that are in fashion not going for the really famous ones but going for uh, not very known but less known brands for example for Rico or for one of the many many minorities that have been made during the years another good deal is a Yashica FX3 not the super thousand version that's gotten a little bit more expensive around 50 70 bucks but uh, the original fx3 and the other the shikas like uh, the, F, the fd if i'm not mistaken you can add them for really really cheap like 10 15 bucks with that first tip check on different action sites sometimes stuff that's really expensive on ebay it's really cheap on craigslist or uh, on katawiki and the opposite is also true Cameras that sell for a lot of money in Katawiki often sell for pins on eBay. Second tip, think in terms of system, especially if you are just starting out. Do not choose a camera based on the brand alone. You should choose a camera based on the kind of lenses and on the expandability that the particular system has. Because nowadays you might be pretty content with just a 50mm lens and just a 35mm lens. And maybe you will be content with health lads for your entire career of film shooter. But you might desire some other kind of lenses just during the years. And if that system offers this kind of lenses, you're set. Otherwise, you will have to change system that's too annoying and expensive. Do not think about the lenses that you want just in terms of focal lens. Pretty much every manufacturer has built lenses in pretty much every focal lens you will ever need. That difference is mostly in terms of aperture. There are manufacturers, think Canon, think Nikon, that makes really, really fast lenses, and in terms of rendering. In my opinion, it's more important that you choose your lenses, especially if you're starting out in terms of the rendering that you like, because that will be most likely consistent across the system, because several lenses, and not in terms of just the focal length. A little well-known fact, for example, is that Minolta lenses, especially the manual focus ones, the MD line, the MC line, were actually made from Minolta with their own glass. Many other, well, if not all, other manufacturers had to resort to buying glass from you know, glass producers like Oya and uh, someone else. But when Ulta made its own glass, that made all the difference in the world in terms of color rendering. Because Minolta could actually harmonize the color rendering across the entire system. All their lenses had the same color rendering. That is not always true for other manufacturers. You will find a lens that's too blue, that another that's too yellow, or maybe a bit too yellow or a bit too blue. It's not something that with digital you have to worry a lot about, but it's something that with film will show up. You might still be able to correct it in post, but it's uh, something less to care about if in, when you're actually shooting, it's all consistent already. Another thing, it's something that you like, and I mean both in terms of the camera body and in terms of the lenses. It might sound a little bit shallow, to choose something, to choose a camera body, to choose a system in terms of the looks of the camera body or of, or of the lenses. But if the particular camera body, if the particular lenses inspires you to pick it up and go out shooting, 
that's a good thing. For example, I'm really attracted to context lenses. I find that the Porsche design of the 80s was around the, one of the most beautiful that I made. And I pick context lenses up more often than other lenses. If you're a beginner, especially, pretty much every SLR made in the last 60, 70 years will be an excellent choice. A rangefinder will also be an excellent choice, but at the price point we are talking about, they might have more limitations. We will see that if you work on these limitations, they are still an excellent uh, tool, but you will uh, have to learn how to use them properly. With SLR, be aware that for a number of years, especially during the 80s, was fashionable for the manufacturer to strip down uh, lower end models. And so you might find some model that doesn't have a manual uh, mod, for example, or that it doesn't have, well, it doesn't give you exposure heating in manual mode. Uh, honestly, avoid those cameras entirely. You can find a much better camera that works even in manual mode, pretty much at the same price. First target, up to the 50 euros mark. If you are talking about cameras that cost less than 50 dollars, 50 euros, obviously the choice will be smaller, but there is a surprisingly large number of cameras that actually cost 50 dollars or way less. And they can still be excellent cameras. For example, all the line of the Canon EOS 1000, the Canon EOS 100, I paid for my like 15 bucks, and if I'm not mistaken, because I needed the battery, not the camera. Pretty much every mid tire outbox camera made by my North Top Canon will stay in this price zone. As well as excellent icon cameras like the 301 or the 801 that used to be a professional model and you can find nowadays for 30 to 50 bucks. If you happen to like a rangefinder or if you want to try a rangefinder, there is a whole host of cameras of my North Thematics or if you score a deal, you can go for a Tier 4 or a Fed 2. These last two are Soviet cameras. You will have to be a little bit cautious when you're buying a Soviet made camera because they're, because they're less consistent in terms of quality. But you will still score a good deal. Just be sure that the seller can prove that the camera is working. If you're talking about an SLR, avoid Soviet cameras altogether. It's not worth the risk. You will pay pretty much the same amount for a Pemblex Potmatic that's work, that works way better. Something like that, just to be clear. And this is indestructible. A service camera will most likely, you know, melt in your head or something like that at one point or another. Service cameras were notoriously unreliable. So avoid them if you can. Up to a hundred dollar out of the euro mark, you can start finding a host of manual cameras or extremely little manual cameras like Olympus M1 or many Minolta's and Nikon FM. So really work or scale. Cameras that were made for the good even nowadays. Personally, I like very much the Convex 139. It's an exceptional camera. It's compact. It works wonderfully even nowadays. And you can often score an exceptional deal here at Convex 139 because the skin tends to peel off and they look ugly. You will have to replace the skin or like I did, they'll have to strip out entirely the skin, but uh, they work perfectly fine. They're actually excellent cameras. Again, mid-tire, almost pro-level cameras at the time, and you can have them for like 15, 30, 50, 70 bucks, depending on the kind of lens that you buy them to with. Up the 100 euro or dollar point mark, you can start finding really good range finders like the Mania Shikas, the Minister, the Olympus XA, that's an exceptional good range finder, and it's as tiny or even smaller than the Arcos Cigarettes, the, the Olympus SP, and uh, many, many others. Let's say that your budget is up to 250 euros, 250 dollars. Now you can start buying a pro level camera. Pretty recent one, by the way or um, all the buff goodies, so to speak. So you can go for a Canon F1, the new version, 
you can go for a Nikon F4 S and a Nikon F5, one of the many Canon EOS One series. These are product of cameras with a host of features that you could probably never <laughs> need, but they are extremely reliable. They can be extremely fast in autofocusing and in handling, etc. They are really out of extension of your eye, but they also can be extremely heavy. So be careful what you fish for, because these are a bit uncomfortable to carry along. They are exceptional cameras. In my opinion, these cameras nowadays are too big for what the 35mm film format is, for how small 35mm format is. So I will reset, I will reset this kind of camera just if you are into sports or really fast action when the features that this covers off uh, can actually be beneficial. And now we are starting to go even in a really good, extremely good French kind of territory. You can start scoring a Canon G1 or a Leica CL, obviously both without a lens. The lens will cost you as much as the car, probably. The exception being the Leica CL, because for a Leica CL, you might be able to buy a cheap Chinese lens. They're actually quite good. The most of these Chinese lenses that are coming out in the last years for maybe 50 to 150 bucks. So you might still be able to buy a lens for really not that much. For the context, the lens will cost you as much as the camera. So at least I guess 150 to 250 euro. Other option for the Leica is a Voilander lens. They are generally more expensive, but sometimes you can score a deal. Especially if you go for the M39 version, the scroll out version that works perfectly fine on a Leica, but it's just an adapter that will cost you like 10, 15 bucks. Up to 500 euros or dollars. Now you can start to give for a proper Leica. You will have to Probably avoid the like I am, unless you're uh, really, really lucky and you manage to score a deal. But you can find many like like um, Barnax, the so called Barnax. These are Struman cameras, but they are still extremely good. They're a bit difficult to operate. I would not advise a beginner to use one of these cameras unless you're really determined to have a Leica. But the rendering is actually wonderful. The rendering of the lenses, I would suggest like a Barnax exclusively to someone who really likes the rendering of the lenses. Otherwise, they're pretty cumbersome to operate, they're a bit difficult for a beginner. Uh, some transition for more experienced and pros because they operate in an old-fashioned way, so you will have to learn to live with their limitations. Another option, quite the opposite of the Lerke and Barnack, is buying something really, really, really modern, like a Canon USB or a Nikon F6. You can score a deal on these cameras, pay for them around the $500 mark. Over $500 or euros. Now we have in the real world like I'm and Canon G rangefinders with lenses this time. The, these are exceptional cameras up the opposite side of the spectrum that of functionality because a Lycan will be mostly manual, most of them won't have a rangefinder. And uh, while a Canon G will have a rangefinder, a motor drive, and other focus. They're technically not rangefinder, but they work uh, like a rangefinder, so for uh, the sake of simplicity, we'll consider them as a rangefinder. These are exceptional systems, both of them. The Altex one, uh, being electronic, it's a little bit more difficult to, or even impossible to repair if it fails. You can still repair a Lycan from the 50s or 40s. Honestly, if you happen to already have a 35mm camera and are just searching for a cheap but good lens to use on the camera, I've got down below a downloadable free PDF with many suggestions. Most of them are under the $100 mark. There are also suggestions for many lenses under the $50 mark. Keep in mind that the best deal is always finding a camera that already comes with a lens. You will never pay the same amount for uh, buying separately the camera and the lens. You will always pay less for buying cameras and lenses combined. Beside the specific model, you can just type in eBay or Katawiki vintage camera, 35mm vintage camera, something like that, and just check the options. 
keep in mind something to look about. The camera has to work, obviously, and try to choose a camera that has at the very least a manual mode. Automatic mode, especially for a beginner, it's not essential. It's just uh, something useful when you are more advanced. But if you have to learn the ropes, it's best to use manual mode. And even more experienced pros still use manual mode all the time. So check that the camera works, the camera has manual mode, and possibly the it has an exposure meter that's actually working. For example, for with the Leica CL, it's often broken. As long as the camera has an exposure meter that's working, manual mode, and that you can actually see what you're going to shoot. So the viewfinder is clear, there are no scratches, no fog, there is no condensation, no haze, no fungus, you know, the usual stuff. Then the camera is good for you. No matter the brand. Like I said, the biggest expense will be actually filled. And even then, you won't have to spend $15 for each little film. You can buy exceptional film, especially like a white, for really cheap, like two or three dollars for each roll, maybe four dollars if you don't buy, if you buy locally, if you don't buy online. Uh, for example, Fomapan or Cantamere. There are many, many extremely good film in black and white. It will become much more expensive if you're shooting color. Not so much negative film, but if you're going to shoot slide film. Nowadays, film has gotten really expensive, but it's not really news. I remember when I was a child, I used to save my money to be able to actually buy a single roll of slide film. I remember I used to buy Ectachrome 64. It was an amazing film, but it costed the equivalent pretty much in terms of buying power of maybe 25 to 30 euros. So not much has changed. Field will be your biggest expense shooting field. Not so much the gear as long as you don't go for really exotic stuff like a 24mm 1.4 or 1.2. And even then, an $800 dollar lens is still less of an investment than all the field that you are going to shoot in maybe 2 years, 3 years. So think carefully what you're going to buy. If you just want to try film, you can get along with spending like maybe $15, including a lens. If you want something that you might use for many, many years to come, growing with the system, you may still keep spending just $15, or you might buy, you might buy something more advanced. It will depend on your needs. If you are shooting fast actions, people, don't be absolutely sure that you need the fastest autofocus available. Even the fastest cameras, with some exceptions, like the Nikon F6 probably, or the Canon EOS 1B, will have a much older, uh, a much older autofocus system compared to the more modern offerings, to what we are accustomed to today. So it's don't discard the manual camera just because it doesn't have to focus. Probably the only reason that I would suggest you to go for an autofocus camera if uh, it's if you like shooting birds or in general wildlife photography, because it's really hard to track a running animal with you know, manual focus and considering the levels of light are often quite low in the woodland, you cannot uh, use uh, you cannot use uh, hyperfocal distance but for street photography for general photography you can you can happily use a manual camera when you're shooting a system don't be overly concerned with using the lenses that you're going to buy on a digital body much every system ever made nowadays has some kind of adapter that lets you use that particular lenses on a digital body. And don't think that these lenses, just because they're old, are not good enough for digital body. For example, with my JFX 52, I'm using my Nolta lenses that I paid kind of five or six euros, I think. They came with a camera that I paid with ten dollars in total, so I'm just splitting the difference between the camera and the lens. And they are amazing. They're super sharp, they're compact, 
they feel great when you're actually focusing and they cover pretty much the entire sensor. Keep also in mind that the larger the sensor, as long as the lens covers the sensor, the easier it will be on that particular lens. So if you're using lenses with um, a medium or soft and medium format sensor, it will be much easier for these lenses, even all lenses to shine. Same thing if the sensor has not a huge resolution. So if you're going to adapt lenses on a 12 megapixel sensor or 20 megapixel sensor, full frame sensor, probably even all the lenses will be extremely good. If you are trying the same thing with a 60 megapixel sensor, it might be, it might get a little dicey. You will have to experiment a little bit. That being said, as long as you stop the lens down a little bit, pretty much any lens ever made, even from a relatively cheap manufacturer, should be okay. And please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'm going to see you next time.